All right, hello and welcome back, everyone. Coming in a little late to the draft, but it's fine. Just the bands out and the pretty standard swag. Not wanting to play that destructive combo again. They take out the Naga, take out the Visage, and last game, pretty much writing the book on why they are so popular in the current metagame. Absolutely dominating, rotating very well. Although the whole game was fairly one-sided towards swag. We'll see if Play Gaming can get anything done here tonight to maybe take this into three games. But this is game two in a best of three between play gaming and some wacky ass G's in the Sevo season three placement matches. And meanwhile, play gaming, pretty much standard bands out there as well. The Bat Rider, as well as the Wisp, gonna take the fall. And it looks like Jesus gonna be on his signature Darkseer once again this game. They take it up first. I'd say that's pretty fair. He's definitely worth the first pick still. And has been for quite a long time, actually. Play gaming. They will go with the Weaver. And of course, you normally see that Weaver Naga pick up right off the start. Uh, but of course, uh, I mentioned it in the draft in game one. The Weaver Abaddon is quite strong. And of course, cut back to a couple months ago, that Weaver Tree and Protector can get a lot done. However, Swag already has the Ion Shell to definitely obliterate the living armor from Treant. So if they're going to pick up that sort of thing, I'd definitely expect the Abaddon. Ten seconds remaining. But we'll wait and see what FSQ here is going to go for. And speaking of FSQ, it looks like that may be his hero there. Uh, seemed to be the core in the tri-lane. Could be Maurice uh, taking it off lane as the Darkseer looks to be handled by Jesus once again. As there's no Visage and he's definitely going to be on the Darkseer. It was the only death last game, so I'm surprised they even let him in here. As they will go with the Timber Saw, so that could be... Uh, a solo safe timber saw, take the weaver plus two into an aggressive tri lane. Uh, or, depending on what the mid will be, as it's obviously not revealed yet, timber could go mid, he's quite strong. The Zeus, gonna go with the Rubik support though, as his second pick uh, into this game too. And that's definitely a pick you want against weaver. Uh, being able to get six at a decent time, steal that Saguchi. It just gives you the move speed, the positioning that you need to get even bigger spells uh, if you can find them. And it's a guaranteed steal pretty much 90% uh, of the time on Weaver. Makes it very annoying, it makes it hard to kill Rubik, and forces Play Gaming here to even buy some Dust and Sentries uh, just to kill the Rubik, which maybe they weren't expecting, but now that he's in the game, could be tough for Play Gaming. And uh, I believe Blink will be handling the Rubik. He's definitely going to have a fun game here uh, as playing Rubik versus the Weaver, as well as the Timber Saw. That's going to be a lot of fun. Timber Chain, Saguchi, and Chakram. Uh, look for Rubik to be all over the place here. As Play Gaming will take out that Nyx. So it looks like they are pretty scared of that hero. They took it out as their first ban in game one. And going to take it out here uh, as the second ban in game two. And they were relying on the PL. So it looks like they were worried about Nyx as a support getting level six. And then uh, with the Vendetta ganking up the PL. And they do it again. Maybe worried about the Weaver this time. Uh, we'll see if they try to do a four protect one again. Uh, or what their strategy here will be as the Abaddon will be taken out by the Jesus. Definitely a good ban here as they do have the Weaver and the Timber Saw with the Photic Shield onto them. That could be uh, pretty devastating. And they dropped the Life Stealer out as well. So banning three of the five heroes that they used uh, there in game one. So not wanting to play the same game at all. But I guess they have the Darkseer. He was one of their heroes from game one. Ten seconds remaining. And uh, probably the top carry right now in the metagame. The Alchemist, uh, going to take the fall, band out fourth. So play gaming. Uh, maybe they don't want to go aggressive with this Weaver, so they take out Alchemist, and that's a good pick, because if you don't want to go aggressive, you don't want an Alchemist free farming in that bottom lane as Swag finds themselves on the Radiant in game two. Chen. I hear Chen! I close my eyes for a second, and then I hear Chen. Always excited to see that hero. He's a lot of fun. Can get some early push with him as well. Or if you just want to farm him up a little bit, you can get a decently fast mech, a good level 6, then the alt with the heal can make your team fight very strong. So far, they don't have a lot of control over their team fight with just the Saguchi and Timber Chain, uh, but definitely a lot of burst damage with the Timber Saw and a little bit there coming out of Weaver in the early game. So we'll see what they get done with the Chen as Swag goes for the Puck. So Squee, he had a sick game on Shadow Fiend, a hero I didn't know he was so accomplished at, but uh, when I think of Squee, I think of Puck and Quap. So look for another big game for Squee as they give him the Puck 
a hero that thrives on team fight control there with the dream coil as gaming play gaming they do go with the tree and protector i mentioned earlier dark is already online with the ion shell to eat through living armor it'll still be good in the early game and help the lanes win as well as uh, thwart any push and he'll heal up the towers if swag can't commit and actually bring a tower down he's great for that and of course overgrowth that kind of solves their team fight control problem but will he be able to get it off we'll have to wait and see as swag now going for their fourth remaining. pick five seconds remaining dire team ban uh gyro i heard him I'm, I'm like not looking at the screen but i hear him gyrocopter here will be picked up the fourth pick right now Looking to probably just take this lane defensively, saying, hey, if you're going to try to aggro into us, which it doesn't look like they're going to do with the Chen and a Treant, Gyrocopter is picked up. He does really well uh, against aggro tri lanes because of remain. Flak Cannon, able to just harass and edge him out of the lane. And of course, if you do go on him, he's got Rocket Brush to do a lot of damage. And that's going to be good in these team fights. They've got the Dream Coil on top of the Calldown, so tons of slow and stun, as well as a lot of damage. And then Darkseer Wall Vacuum behind that. And even an overgrowth if Rubik can steal it. So there's a lot right here for Swag into the 5v5 Doto. Uh, that can be pretty exciting, especially when uh, put together early. Maybe going to play like Na'Vi here is Swag. And Gyrocopter also good against Weaver if he's left alone. Weaver can't really get close just because Suguchi is not going to outweigh the damage that he's going to take from the Rocket Barrage. Uh, but I'd probably say Weaver wins that lane overall. Uh, if they start 1v1 together, but if Weaver's off lane or something and then his supports leave him and it becomes 1v1, Gyro with a bit of an advantage, uh, he's going to be fine in that lane. And that could be uh, what they're kind of banking on here. As Coddle will take out the fall. So banning out a hero that FSQ played last game for Play Gaming. They take out the Coddle, so worried about any more AoE um, damage going into the team fights um, they do need another support so they take out the coddle and now zeus on to Five the fifth ban remaining. here reserve time heading in uh, to the reserve time swag looking for their last ban what does play gaming need well I'd say a support or an off lane or a mid, as Trian and Timbersaw can kind of do all of those roles uh, combined. But we'll see. They ban out a mid. They take out the OD. Play Gaming took it last round. Uh, they will drop out the OD because they are running the puck. Um, I say Play Gaming should go for... I want to say go for TA. Um, TA will absolutely destroy puck. However, Darkseer can absolutely destroy TA. Uh, if the TA player is not extremely experienced with that matchup. Remaining. It's definitely way harder for the TA, but they can still do well. Uh, we saw it in the Sevo games last remaining. night, and I got not really an argument, but discussing it in the chat with one person. I don't know. He was saying TA should win it like every time. I don't really agree. If Darkseer plays it right, pushes the lane, and then just dives the tower without attacking with ion shells, especially two ion shells, even if TA melds, like what can she do? She's just standing still. Ion shells obliterate. And I just wanted to get my point out there again. It's an interesting matchup. I don't know. I say Darkseer wins it 8 out of 10 times. I made that number up. But Magnus is going to be the pick. That will be their mid. He's a weaker mid. But with the living armor from Treant Protector, should be able to sustain. Can definitely push the wave. And we'll do okay versus Puck if he can land the shockwaves. Puck, though, likely just going to dodge him with the phase shift. So we'll see what they can get done as Swag picks up a Doom. So it looks like uh, Doom. Maybe just going to go ahead and jungle there. Doom going to be great for thwarting the RP, as well as stopping Weaver and or Timbersoft from uh, running around and doing damage uh, later on in the game. Uh, looks like they will just uh, duo lane top, I think. Maybe just Zilu as well as Blink. Or duo aggressive, because Chen's going to be in the jungle. But uh, we'll see what they decide to do. Or aggro with the Doom, because Doom actually wrecks Chen. You can just devour any of the creep he has. And makes them pretty much useless. Maybe get the other team to overextend. Uh, but we'll see. We'll do some introductions here. So on the side of play gaming. On the dire here in a game 2. We've got Audi on that one roll here. Heading into the top lane on the Weaver. Looks like he will be going for a quick Aquila with that. And as well as picking up some regen. And we've got Chen. That's going to be FSQ. Just buying some sentries and a bunch of support items. Going to head into the jungle. Hexical meanwhile. 
on the tree and protector lots of consumables as well as an observer ward and we've got magnus here going into the mid lane what dude okay man had a rough time on od last game versus squee this time he's on magnus going against a puck another this matchup is actually kind of hard for magnus so we'll see what he can get done and finally for play gaming we've got some whoa what i've never seen that dance before we've got timbersaw gonna be played by some people call me maurice and over to swag here on the radiant we've got darkseer now being played by jesus once again he bought his own wards actually uh, expecting to go one versus three maybe wanting to block some camps we'll see what he gets done as rubik will be handled by blink so no surprise there as uh, we got Zilu backing him up, or actually being backed up by the Rubik, but he's playing the Gyrocopter here. Rocket Barrage first, no surprise. And last but not least, we've got Smurzito here on the Doom, this will just be jungling. Again. So, being pretty greedy with the lanes, but they can get away with it. It's just a Timber Saw. Rubik can edge him out uh, pretty easily. Maybe not pretty easily, but uh, I don't know. Zilu's going to have a lot of room. He's a ranged hero who do, does fine against Timbersaw. And of course with the help from Blink. Smurz, meanwhile, he plays the Jungle Doom a lot. And I look for him to get pretty active once he hits 6, maybe with the Midas. Try to get that Midas mech up around 15 to 20 minute mark. Uh, but we'll see what he gets done as actually Blink with Invis here looking a pretty fly with that cloak on. See if they try to do anything. Already the <laughs> Living Armor is being spammed, not even taking damage. A living armor with, uh, in conjunction with the reactive armor from Timbersaw himself does a lot. As Jesus getting a lot of damage here on Hexical. Will he actually go down for the first blood? I don't know. Zeus continuing to chase there. The living armor goes off. Audi comes in as well. And Jesus already level 2. Just about. There he is. Now he's got the surge. We talked about it in game 1. Level 2. So important. It gives you your farming damage spell, the ion shell, as well as your escape in the surge. And with just leech seed... And maybe a Dark Troll Warlord net. Jesus, once again, can't do anything. I mean, if they wanted another carry, they picked the Weaver first, so valuing it very high. But it's their only carry in the game right now. And I don't like that. That's not how Weaver should be played. Definitely want another carry in the mid lane, like an OD, like a Conquer, or even a Dragonite or something, to just uh, pick up the slack when Weaver needs to farm and get some items. Uh, but we will see. I kind of like it more as the mid lane roll or into an aggressive tri lane. But a defensive carry. Not so much. However, it's what they've got. We'll see what they can do with it as the Courier now bringing out a bottle for Squee. On the other side of things, we've got a bottle coming out here for What Up Dude. Okay, so the mid lane looks to be pretty even. Not really. 10 and 2 here for Squee in the last hit deny column. And we've got What Dude. Okay, man, sitting around uh, 4 and 0 at the moment. Maurice taking a bit of harass in the bot lane as well. We'll be going for the Timber Chain to escape, more so the off lane skill. If you see Timber Saw mid, it's generally. Max Whirling Death, get two points in reactive armor, and then start getting uh, Chakram as well as Timber Chain there. Dyer's middle tower is and let's see. An Doing really well is Zilu. He's 8 and 4 down there. Timber saw picking up levels, but uh, no last hits for him yet. Here comes the Dark Troll Warlord, but the Surge wasn't baited out, so get to some attacks in there. But Jesus up to already level 3. Doing even better, actually, way better than he even was last game. As Squee continues. To dominate the lane did go for more of a last hitting build here with the mantle uh, just to get up to about 64 here at level four even a whole level ahead uh, as looks like mag got the first rune so that explains the experience difference did rotate out of the lane uh, somewhat early and i believe this blocks this camp i think it's this that blocks it i think that's the box i don't know the jungle in this game is stupid to be honest especially this ridiculous camp here it's like this whole freaking area even more than that actually it's like this oh that's a phone sorry but either way uh we know we've all been on the radiant and of course messed up warding or de warding even blocked our own camp trying to de ward i'm sure uh it does tend to happen sometimes as Squee continues to dominate the mid lane, actually, really badly. 21 and 7 right now here. Magnus only at 6 and 0. Oh. It's got to be these new banners. I mean, can we just look at those again? Look at these. Oh my god. Look better than IG's banners. Alright, reading the chat there. See some more people excited starting in uh, Sivo. 
uh, this next upcoming season there in open and or main. And is this the first game? Uh, they don't put on the series indicators for me because nobody loves me, apparently. Uh, but this is game two in a best of three. Swag with a very dominant performance in game one. So far, definitely winning the laning phase. Big XP and gold advantages right now. Uh, if I had to put my rares on a team, I'd say Swag here, uh, looking to win this group as well. Um, only one loss so far as Maurice could be in trouble. Timber Chain will lash, but he takes damage. A lot of damage. We'll see if the uh, Living Armors come in. Um, I'd say this will probably be the last game for Sivo, but who knows? Maybe Play Gaming shows up with some big RPs, uh, shock room combinations. And then after that, uh, maybe like 30 minute break, and then we'll be bringing you some NEL games tonight. And those are going to be a lot of fun. Item drops are enabled on the stream, so it should be a pretty good time here. And of course, Sivo Season 3 main. I know Sivo's been uh, playing around with the idea of getting the in-game tickets. So if you want an in-game ticket to try to get some items there for watching Sivo casts over at twitch.tv slash fmbpdota. Make sure to let them know. Uh, drop something on the forums or maybe just contact them. I'm sure their information to contact is out there. As the Dream Crawl goes off in the mid lane, Squeed lands just about everything. He doesn't want to break this. He will, though, just because the Living Armor came out. The Orb to hit will do a lot. Squeed takes it because he sees it land. The Salve, actually, though, is going to be enough uh, to keep what dude okay man alive. Won't be giving up the first blood this time, but he's level 5, not 6. No RP, only 11 last hits. Compare it to Squee. Maybe going to even hit 7 pretty soon after this wave. 30 and 20, 30 and 12 in the mid lane. Uh, so doing really well as we see the top farmers as well as three, four out of the five top net worths now. We've got Puck, Gyro, Doom. Then we find Weaver here uh, on the Dire and uh, Jesus even in the fifth place net worth right there. So doing a lot. 2,600 net worth on the Puck and then Darkseer there in the fifth spot at 1,600. So, looks like to be a solid uh, early game performance here. Let's check in on the Doom. How's he doing? He's got that Quelling Blade still, Gloves of Haste, and actually, he's only about 330 gold away from picking up the Midas, as well as with Devour. Definitely allows Doom to be a great utility with a Devour and early Midas to pick up big support items throughout the game, even when he starts roaming around and his uh, farm slows down. Devour and Midas gold, always going to be kicking in, so... Look for him to get a mech, then maybe pick up a Vlad's into an AC or a Shiva's after that. So just high armor and items that's going to help the team push and 5-man. Um, usually what Doom does, and that's the only role that I really approve of uh, for Doom. I don't like him as a farming carry or anything like that. I just don't think he brings enough. There's so many people that are so much better. Basically, if you want Devour and Midas, uh, why not just pick Alchemist for Grievous Greed, Midas. And if you want to take it one step fur further, get a Battle Fury as well. And let's see, Jesus level 6 right now. Soul Ring is online. Uh, in terms of last hits, he's at only 19. So, he is offlane 1 versus 3. It's not an offlane that's going to be too good, or a safe lane that's too good at uh, shutting down a Dark Seer. So, he's getting a bit. Uh, and looks like Chen is opting to just go for a pretty fast 6, maybe get up some items. As he hasn't, he did rotate over to the lane earlier just to trade some hits, show that he will have a presence maybe with that Dark Troll Warlord uh, throughout the net. But now finds a Wildkin. Does he have any stacks set up? Uh, it doesn't look like it. Something you always want to do on Chen is uh, pretty much try to stack a, one of the big camps there or the medium camp here. And then when you do find a Wildkin, inevitably, go and clean it up. Get tons of levels in gold. If your supports need levels or if the other support needs a level, you can bring them over to get involved. But Zeus looking for the first blood, diving past the tier 1 tower. He might take the fall here as the Dark Troll Warlord will throw the net. Zeus is going to drop, but he picks up the first blood in a 1 vs 2. Slash 1 versus 3 situation, so very good there for Swag uh, as Play Gaming. At least they get a kill, so they notch up the scoreboard at 1-1, but uh, Swag coming out way ahead after that trade. We can see now the gold graph at only 8 minutes. They're almost 5k ahead. XP, though, about 1,500 as the mid-tier 1 taking some hits, about half health. Squee, he's got up that Dream Coral, but he's going to actually drop it. Will be snapped. Blink is coming behind on the Rubik as well. The illusion to go out. Squee continuing to chase, getting the damages there. Blink not going to be able to catch up. And uh, Squeak pretty much uses everything there to try to get it. Bottle charge is coming out, but here comes Zilu. Also level 7. Call down is online, but not going to really uh, want to waste the mana as they bring the creep wave with them. Blink does have boots 1 even, but just was not able to catch up there as bot tower. It's actually already fallen, I'm pretty sure, a while ago as we check it out. Going to pop the heal 
Is that onto the Weaver, maybe? Was well, getting pretty low. Battling up there with that level 4 Ion Shell. Hard to Saguchi through that. You're going to take a lot of damage. Although I may have just been able to get uh, Magnus here back into the fight with the bottle and the heal. Doesn't even have to go back to base. So that's going to bode well for him. It looks like uh, Puck did decide to go back to base. 30 more seconds uh, for that next Dream Coil. And we'll see when Swag wants to take the aggression into the top lane. Just buy some dust and really shut down this Weaver who is doing alright. He's got 31 last hits right now. Uh, should probably have a little bit more as Weaver can pretty much win or go even on this matchup 1v1. Even with Darkseer creep skipping, Weaver can get the last hits at the tower with the Saguchi with the Gemini attack. It's not too hard and um, despite having two supports, he's losing this lane to a Darkseer who's alone. They're almost even in farm and he got the first blood so Smurz is here. Invis up here actually just with the smoke. Not a whole lot of damage is holding the net as well as the Doom. So if they get that off onto the Chen, maybe he goes down. TP comes forward. That's going to be Gyrocopter. It looks like now is the push. Was coming from the Dire. They made his TP everyone up here. But no, he cancels or was canceled. Decides not to follow through on it. The push looks to have slowed down. The Ion Shells and, of course, even Scorched Earth going to do a little bit as he continues to devour and Midas Chen's creep. So Chen, uh, kind of effectively useless besides his heal and his test of faith and of course the send back right now because his creeps uh, They're gonna keep going down every time he brings him into the lane He actually will just feed doom without doom having to uh, back out and go into the jungles As squeeze sitting at 63 15 so farming very well for a mid here who is even uh, actually did not get himself a kill But in terms of net worth he's still first We've got uh, Zilu in the bot lane doing a lot, but team fight up top, the Chakram goes out, the Doom has been dropped on the Audi, this fight's 2v4, Jesus looking to go, maybe he's going to have to get out here, I think Audi's going to clean it up, but no, he can't get in range, the Tranquil Boots are broken and thus completely useless, and he can't Saguchi either, now Doom runs out, they haven't been able to kill him, Jesus will actually drop to the Saguchi damage, make it 3-2, however, Tree went down before we got there, and Magnus looks to have died in the mid lane to uh, Squee 1v1. Smurz, however, still on the run, trying to get denied by the Ancients. Will he? Yes, he will. So what you gotta do there in that situation is, if you're a Weaver, attack the Ancients to draw them away from the Doom. That's at least your best attempt. As Squee now goes into the fight, this Fade Bolt from Blink picks it up. Blink, double kill actually. Will just right click down the Chen after the Fade Bolt kill. And now, 5-3 to three right now. The kills though, even. Gold Graph, however, not even close. 8,000 in climbing gold, XP 5,000 in climbing advantage swag. And I gotta say, it's this new logo. Like, look at that. I don't. I should get the name of actually who made that, so we can give him uh, credit for it. Let me do that. Oh, apparently I spelled something wrong on my overlays. Oops, I spelled season wrong. It's a hard word, all right? Yes, ask the chauffeur. You are probably right, but I like to keep it. And of course, this is just to get into main, so it looks like play gaming. Uh, they do know what's going on. Their game one draft was actually pretty, pretty uh, good draft, I thought. Uh, game 2, a little interesting. I kind of see what they're going for, but it's not really working out. And uh, they should have a really fun time in open, so. As uh, looks like... <laughs> oh, they... I think Swag actually paused, but then there was a disconnect on the other side. Alright, and I figured out who made these. I'll type it and say it. Green Man CH. So, all credit to him for Swag's logos. Uh, absolutely astonishing. Now, maybe we're getting ahead of ourselves, but... Uh, pro logo, but is the team pro? We'll see. They're in the MLG Columbus qualifiers. We'll see how far they can get. I think in a game or two, they're going to have to play against... Uh, Demon, Arteezy, Mason, Dark Falco, and... If I... And Pandago. I believe that's the whole team, actually. Basically, NEL stars. Been casting them a lot uh, the last couple nights. So if you want to check out NEL action over here at twitch.tv slash FMBPDota, that'll be going live in about 
um, whenever this game ends, basically, maybe like 20 minutes after that. Uh, so I hope to see you there tonight. Uh, should be a lot of fun. I normally cast it until like 4 a.m. Looking to get started a little earlier tonight uh, if the games are going on, and then maybe go to like 2 a.m. And that's Eastern time. As we still have that pause. Checking out the net worth still. Four of the five here. Four swag dominating the top five. Puck at 5,500. Gyro, 5,100. Doom, 4,200. Finally, we find Weaver here for Play Gaming at 3,400. And Jesus, 1v3 in the offlane. I believe he's picked up two kills now. One, two, and one. So, yeah, effectively was involved in two kills in that 1v3 matchup. And yeah, he's sitting in fifth place at 3,300, just about. And yeah, the Jesus, is he lagging? Uh, probably, as he is disconnected. There he goes. Maurice, back into the action. And of course, anyone watching here for the first time, going to be bringing you SIVO and NA Dota Elite League every night here. So, make sure to follow. Middle tower is under Get notified attack. when I go live. You can also follow on Twitter, also at FMBPDota. YouTube has all the VODs, same thing, and there's a Facebook, Facebook group as well if you feel so inspired to follow me on everything. Uh, it would definitely inspire me to update the Facebook more often if there were followers. Our Zilu continues to farm Phase, Ring of Aquila, or Aquile. I don't know how people really want to say it these days. I've always said Aquila. And uh, Ogre Club. So it looks like he is just going to be going for a pretty fast... Ooh, I hear the Hand of God from Chen. It's not enough to save Audi's Weaver. He does drop. Jesus picks up a kill. He's going to make himself 2-2-1 two, two, and one right now. The top tier one tower getting pretty low. We've got Puck squeeze up here as well. Wants to find the Chen. Will find the Chen. Not going to drop the coil on one. Save it for the team fight that he's expecting. And he's right. The TB support comes in. FSQ and Maurice. They're up here. But the chat is saying, even if what dude okay man gets that five man RP, do they even have the damage to really follow up on it? And I, I got to say, I think he's right. The mechanism is not quite online, but it's just about there. I think it's finished now. So. Uh, the heal is operational for the Radiant. They got the mech up. And Hand of God down for Chen. Puck though. Two-man Dream Coral onto Tree. Onto Timbersaw. They snap it. And the call down drops as well. Looks like Maurice will be chased here by Zilu. And let's see what he can get. Blink has lift off cooldown. Has Saguchi as well. Going to get in range. But they don't have the reveal. And Smurr's Doom picks off the Magnus meanwhile. Where did he even go down? All the way back here. It looks like the Doom just ticked. And he drops from it. As now Chen in trouble. Going to be sandwiched up there by four, and it goes down as Zeus tries to kill the courier, but uh, looks like they won't. Squee, though, going to use this opportunity to bottle crow maybe since it's here, or not. I think he probably just should, unless the runes are up now. It spawns now, and it will be bottom, actually. And they get the top tier one tower after that team fight. Make it 10 to 3, officially a large lead. 14,000 gold, 12,000 XP right now, as they look to maybe just uh, push up 5 man Dota from now on out. There's really no reason to delay the game. Just uh, group up as a team. And yeah, continue to win the team fights as they should. Unless Play Gaming shows up with the big plays here. I don't know if there's much they can do. They need to land the RPs with the Overgrowth as well as the Chakrams on top of it. But now that the Timber Saw, uh, he's taken one death. Likely to take another as what dude okay man goes forward here on the Magnus looking for an RP. Won't find it and not going to just use it on um, just a Darkseer. And at this point in the game, I would say, using RP just to kill someone and sort of edge back into the game, probably worth it. However, if the buybacks are available, one person just goes down, and then they buy back. That's a probably easy high ground fight there. It might be this case for play gaming. They really are reliant on a big RP here, three four-man RPs. But even that being said, Blink could steal it if he needs to. He's got the Suguchi. He's pretty mobile. Smurfs back into the fight. Doom is off cooldown now. RP onto two. Here comes the follow-up, though. Not even a scratch. And that was the two-man RP. Wall goes down from Zeus. Tries to get the vacuum. Fails miserably. But Blink steals the RP. Will use it on Magnus himself. Smurz running around the fight. Yet to doom anybody. Here comes the heal from Chen. He gets caught by Blink as well. Looking to maybe go down. Gyrocopter isn't even here. But Squee onto a killing spree. Three-man Dream Coil. The doom as well. Triple kill here. And breaks the 
Oh, breaks the dream coil with the skewer. Make it an ultra kill there for Squee. And that fight was 4v5. Gyrocopter, the big, big source of damage. Not even there. And Doom with the level death up to 2. Gonna take him out. The multiplier is 5. What level is Maurice? Hmm, I was guessing he was gonna be 10, because that seemed to do a lot, but... I don't mean to be you know Zilu? He's like, yeah, I was waiting for my BKB. I don't know why you're fighting team, but he's probably okay with it since they team wiped them 4v5. He's now going to go ahead and just push out the mid lane here. And yeah, that's um, the mid and the tier 2 are going to be the only... And the top tier 2, that is, the only outer towers remaining right now. And this is a team that has the tree and protector. And look how many towers they have. They're holding on to 2, and they haven't even pushed any. Despite having the Chen. This Darkseer pretty much did too well in that offlane. Ion Shell got leveled up quickly. And then it was too hard to push against as Doom showed up with Devour with a Midas. And absolutely shuts down Chen. It's the most annoying thing to play against when your Chen or Enchanter is trying to push. As uh, he's in trouble. Flat Cannon in the vacuum as well. Smurz will pick up that kill. Takes out the Hellbear as well. So easy gold right there for Smurz. Shadowblade even. Didn't even opt to go for the mech because Darkseer did so well. Uh, gonna go for some U... Uh, damage and chasing items actually with the shadow blade and the Dagon is up Dagon one now on squee He's wicked sick picks off the timber saw doesn't even have to use the dream coil It's 17 to 4 at play gaming sitting in their base ever so cautiously As timber saw dies trying to get back into it just about made it and they actually called the GG so that swag taking it 2-0 here tonight after seeing game one pretty expected but of course play gaming I hope you guys watch the Vons. I don't mean to be too hard or anything on you guys, but uh, just watch it, analyze them a little bit, use my casting if you want to, uh, but make sure to go over the replays, kind of go over your play, see where you went wrong, maybe in the draft, sort of the, the picks. Don't value Weaver so high if you're going to run him as just the one roll carry. And I hope, you guys, hope to see you guys around in open, and of course, uh, to improve your gameplay. And this was Sivo Season the Replacements. I'm Helium. And I'll be bringing you some NEL uh, within the hour. So see you guys then.